Good morning. We're starting out quiet in Springfield. It's mostly sunny. Temperature at 70 degrees, so it's warm. On south and west winds at 5 miles per hour. It's 68 degrees in Branson, 70 in Camdenton, and 70 in Fort Leonard Wood. Still pretty humid out there this morning. That comfortable air is trying to seep in from the north, but our front is moving very slow. So most of us will be warm and humid today, with only that relief getting into central Missouri at least for this afternoon. So 70 degrees at the bus stop this morning, 88 by dismissal, warm and sticky. Uh, we'll have an isolated storm possible to the south along the Missouri-Arkansas border. Some cooler lower 80s to the north, and then again still warm and sticky to the south ahead of that front. Storms collapse by sunset, and then we're looking at a more comfortable night tonight with temperatures in the middle 60s. Uh, by tomorrow, temperatures up around 90 degrees, again with some mostly sunny skies. So that relief only really for the top half of the area today, still humid to the south. Not, not, uh, not bad tonight, and then by tomorrow it's going to be warm and sticky again. Quiet the next three days, mostly sunny skies, 90 on Thursday, 92 on Friday, getting hot, humid, and summery again. Dorian is still a Category 2 hurricane with 105 mile per hour winds. It's moving to the north and West with an increasing forward speed. Finally, hurricane watches and warnings in effect for the Carolinas. The next uh, concern here is going to be some life threatening storm surge and damaging winds. Whether or not the storm makes landfall, they'll still feel those impacts. And then it heads up past Virginia, past the Northeast, and up towards Nova Scotia. Joe Lorne. In a local spotlight for you, pets in Republic waiting for a forever home will be able to do so with more space because the animal shelter is moving to a bigger location. Our Hannah Zettel got a sneak peek of the new building, which will make animals more comfortable and also save some money. Well, that's right. The City of Republic's animal shelter processes over 500 animals a year, but the current location has proven too small to keep up with that growing number of pets in need. Overcrowded cages have housed over 3,000 animals since 2013, and when those spots are taken, homeless pets must be moved to other facilities. Each transfer runs taxpayers about $55, totaling $15,000 per year. Republic voters approved a capital tax improvement sales tax in 2017. That includes finances for a new shelter that's already planned to move into a building on State Highway 174. That new shelter will open up space for better intake exams and create more room for animals as they wait for their forever homes. Animal Control Supervisor Christina Elmore admits her staff works in close quarters, so they're excited for the change. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like way, way bigger. We're also going to be able to have um, like maybe do more community outreach programs and stuff like that too because we'll have a bigger facility to do that with and maybe even try to do like once a year rabies clinics stuff like that just to become more community involved and to help the citizens. This is the site of the new shelter and it was formerly a daycare center and after renovations and additions the structure will measure over 6,500 square feet. Bidding for that construction project opens this Thursday and should be finished by 2020. All right, thank you, Hannah. Some political coverage for you right now. After a streak of shootings in St. Louis and Kansas City, Governor Mike Parson met with black lawmakers in an attempt to find common ground on how to stop gun violence. Here's what Parson said last week ahead of yesterday's meeting. We're going to do whatever I feel like we can at the state level to put, to do whatever resources we have. I feel within my powers to do that and also stay in the lane of my powers to do that. But, you know, on the gun issue, you know, it's just not a gun issue. You know, this, this issue is a lot more than just a gun issue right now. You know, this is a society issue, and we've got to figure out how we all work together. In that meeting, some of those lawmakers pushed for gun control policies, but Parson suggested deploying highway patrol troopers. For a long-term solution, he suggested increasing access to jobs and education about it. Walmart has decided to stop selling handgun ammunition and is asking you to no longer open carry in its stores either. The announcement comes just days after a mass shooting claimed seven lives in Odessa, Texas, and follows two other back-to-back -back shootings last month, one of them at a Walmart in Texas. The remaining supply of of ammo will be focused on hunting and sport shooting. It will include long barreled deer rifles and shotguns and much of the ammunition they require, as well as hunting and sporting accessories and apparel. Walmart will reduce its market share of ammo from around 20 percent to 6 to 9 percent. Some politicians, including Arkansas State Senator and Republican Bart Hester, disagree. You hate to see people making uh, small changes every time there's, there's a mass shooting. You know, 
I, I don't believe, that, and neither do I think that they believe it's going to affect change in, in that world. It's a, it's a much more complex issue than where someone buys, uh, buys their ammunition from. Other organizations like Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America applauded the announcement. Severe weather has been consistent throughout the Ozarks this year. As you may recall, many tornadoes and floods impacting our communities. In Branson yesterday, though, the fire and rescue teams started another round of training programs to help citizens be prepared for when these kinds of disasters occur. Completing the training makes you part of a community emergency response team. Fire Chief Ted Martin explains to us what exactly this consisted of. The CERT program really helps local citizens become prepared to be self-sufficient for that 72 hours, even as emergency responders are stretched thin on disaster scenes. This gives the opportunity for local citizens to help their neighbors by learning how to turn off gas supplies, how to do basic first aid, how to prepare an emergency kit, uh, how to do some light search and rescue, and use a fire extinguisher. And after the CERT train was, training was completed, you can help those in your neighborhood on your own or join the CERT team that helps people across the community. Toxic algae has now been found closer to home at Bryce Davis Park in Arkansas. A water sample taken from the park's pond showed an alarming level of microcystin, an algae toxin that can cause significant problems for dogs. The city's parks and recreation staff has placed signage near the pond warning folks to stay away until those levels decrease. Bry Byron Humphrey is the park's maintenance superintendent. He says, keep an eye on your dog while you're hanging out at the park. All right, we have a few Google trends that we're looking at. First, we're talking about the e-cig ban, right? Yes, that just took effect in Michigan today. That's the first ban on flavored e-cigarettes around the country. It's a six-month ban, so it's temporary, but that is in place while lawmakers work for more permanent legislation. I believe that takes place today, right? Mm -hmm. The ban yeah. takes effect right there. So then also another sports headline that's happening, St. Louis native Ezekiel Elliott signed a deal with the Dallas Cowboys now, and this is actually a deal of record proportions. Six years for $90 million. Ooh. Highest paid running back ever in the NFL. Do they have a cap in the NFL, a pay cap? For certain players and positions, there's, uh, you know, there's a, the teams have salary caps, not like baseball. I know that's what you're thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have, yes, there mean. are caps. So gotcha. he's getting a lot of that money. We need to also look at this forecast one last time as well. Heading out to the bus stop, pretty nice, right? Yeah, a little bit warm and humid. Uh, 70 degrees this morning, 88 by dismissal, warm and sticky again. Maybe a storm today as that front rolls through. Otherwise, summery sunshine, lower 90s. All right, everyone, get out there and enjoy it and enjoy this upcoming sunrise here in Branson. Thanks for joining us here on Daybreak this morning.